Today on the Wayne train, we take on Hull City as we look to make our way into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup for the first time and then we go to Old Trafford for a big top four clash in the Premier League against Manchester United and it also should be Ben Wayne's 100th game. Welcome to episode number 28 of The Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today as I said, fifth round clash in the FA Cup at Ashton Gate. We take on Hall City from the Championship and then a big third versus fifth clash in the Premier League at Old Trafford against a Manchester United team who could go live long points with us if they do beat us in that game, which should hopefully be The Wayne Train's 100th for Plymouth Argyle. So if you're looking forward to that, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but off the back of yesterday's episode where we took on Brighton in the fourth round of the FA Cup and off the back of that West Ham in the Premier League if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner three games played since then for some slightly mixed results which is a bit disappointing the most disappointing of those was the first one away at Fulham because we suffered back-to-back -back defeats in the Premier League and this was a bit of a bottle job from us it's fair to say you can see there we were 1-0 up just past the half hour mark through Damien Pizarro starting this game because the Wayne train was still out with an injury but then late on we give away a penalty which Tago Almada does put away for around about 12 minutes left and then Adama trail away for them scores a goal it was a bit of an unlucky one truth be told but a quick fire double and we do suffer a 2-1 defeat which based on stats does feel a little bit harsh but the overall XG obviously helped out by the penalty which they put away it was quite even but that a disappointing result considering that Fulham are down in the bottom half of the table that felt like a game that we should be winning especially if we want to stay inside of that top four so it was a bit of a blown chance for us there to put an extra gap on Manchester United in that fifth spot but thankfully off the back of that we got back on track and it was in the two games that Wayno has played since he's come back from injury first up a quick fire double in the first half did mean we picked up a 2-0 win over Leeds United goals there to Sarawi and to Buckley unfortunately good Johnson did get injured around the hour mark in this game and that is going to keep him out for a little while we'll reveal that injury shortly but thankfully we're already up by two goals nil and held on for that one a pretty comfortable win as you can tell by the stats and then a bit more of a narrow one one nil against Nottingham Forest but with that one also being at Ashton Gate against the team right down near the bottom of the table you'd like to think we'd pick up a win there and thankfully we did Wayno did get the assist for the Iliev goal and it was a very comfortable win probably should have won that one by a more comfortable scoreline but thankfully two wins off the back of those two losses and it does mean in the Premier League obviously things could change before we come back for that second game in today's episode because we're taking part in the FA Cup we find ourselves in third just above Chelsea on goal differential and three points further back to Manchester United who these days have played the same amount of games as us if they win that one they would go above us because of their superior goal differentials hopefully we can pull off something at Old Trafford and at least try and stay above them and keep ourselves in one of those surefire Champions League qualifying spots albeit fifth might be enough for us with the coefficient and the expanded Champions League in 2026-27 in this game scenario but as I said the Wayne train has come back in those last couple of games but unfortunately a couple of other injuries that we are dealing with also back from injury recently Adam Randall and our starting left back in the Gal Guti areas but also we have picked up a couple as well as you saw before Good Johnson he got injured in that win over Leeds United thankfully is only one day away from being able to make his way back onto the bench and pulled ankle ligaments he should be fine for that big clash against Manchester United also we've got Facundo Farias who is still dealing with some injuries since the turn of the year he's been injured for quite a bit so far since the start of 2026 but he's out with sprained knee ligaments for 10 days to three weeks won't feature in today's episode but thankfully we have Tony Springett who can be that extra left wing option and also a double hernia for our third choice goalkeeper and Hubert Glushit but thankfully that won't affect us too much seeing as Mike Cooper is our cup goalkeeper so it does give someone like Cusper Tobias our new signing in yesterday's episode a chance to get a rest here and hopefully we can make our way through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and really we should be even with 
a slightly rotated team with this being a cup competition because these guys are mid-table in the championship. You'd like to think this is a team that we can be beating, especially at home. This does look like quite a kind draw for us and hopefully we can then see who we might get in the quarterfinals. We might come back for that in tomorrow's episode. And also, if we get through the quarterfinals, might actually be an FA Cup theme episode just so we can finish the season at the end of this week. We might also play the semi-final in that episode as well if we can get past both Hull City and whoever we might meet in the quarterfinal. But with this being a game against the team mid-table in the championship, it did feel like a good chance for us here to rotate our team a little bit, just make sure those who are quite injury-prone don't need to feature in this one. So that does mean we've got Cooper in goal as per usual. Also, Mosquera, a new Colombian right back. He is in there for Serginho Dest. Also, defensive midfield-wise, both Buckley and Randall will get a start there. They have a decent combination. And as well as that, we have got Morgan Whitaker at right wing over Bloomy, who these days is probably the first choice. His attributes are a bit better than Morgan, but to be fair, Morgan has done very well for us so far in the safe, so definitely not too much of a downgrade there, if at all so far. Picked up player of the season in both of our completed seasons so far. In the safe, but there's that lineup, as we did run through before. Also, Parola these days is starting over Jacob Graves, our big signing on deadline day. In yesterday's episode with that spare money that we did have from the sale of Louis Jr., that 40 million that we just happened to have spear off the back of that signing of Tobias for only three. Now, a chance there from a free kick at the far post. Ilyev got his head on the end of that one, I believe. It was him or Wayno, but he just puts that one over the bar. The goalkeeper actually left a pretty big gap there for us to try and put that one through, but unfortunately, just a bit too high. But early stages looks like we're on the front foot, albeit Hall there did have the ball, but thankfully, good interception there. From Wilson S. Brand at left back. That's the other change to our usual first choice 11. Miguel Gutierrez still a little bit injury prone, but there is a goal, the first one of today's episode. I think it was scored by Morgan Whitaker. I've actually missed that completely. Sarawi makes his way down the left hand side, floats this one. It's a missed hitter. Whitaker heads it down, and it was a Wayne Train goal. It's kind of weird that Wayne know his name disappeared towards the end there, but the Wayne Train scores the first goal of today's episode. That's a great start. Not noticing that Wayne did score the first goal, but he gets us off to a nice start here, makes it 1 0, and hopefully now we can kick on and make our way through to the quarters of the FA Cup. It would definitely be the furthest we've gone in the FA Cup so far here at Plymouth Argyle. To be fair, I think already this is the furthest that we have gone, but still 1 0 coming up to the 20 minute mark. And now Bowler with a free kick tries to put that one top right corner to be fair. Cooper gave him a bit of space to try and put that one into, but thankfully comes up with a good save. But now Hall City here do have a corner. They put that one far post, but thankfully Mosquera, the Colombian, will head that one away. It stays 1 0. But shortly off the back of that, there is a chance here potentially coming as the referee is going to have a talk to Wilson S. Brand. Because of that, we'll just try and drop to positive to see if that's going to make the highlight stop or if it will still get shown. Unfortunately, we still get shown it, so we'll go back to attacking. Thankfully, we hit that one away. And actually, this might be a chance for us here to do something on the counter attack. Nicola Ilyev makes his way forward down that right hand side, squares that one a bit for Randall, just takes his time. Wayno, lovely pass there for Ilyev. Tight angles, so just takes his time, puts that one across the face of goal, but unfortunately Ingram can hold on to that one for Hall C. But so far the Wayne train well and truly involved in our attack in this game. But this highlight will continue. Ingram pumps that one deep, but Wilson S. Brand wins it in the air. That's the end of that highlight, but shortly off the back of that, it's a corner in our favour. Duffy heads that one away, and actually a chance here for Slater to do something on the counter-attack, albeit very slow on the ball. And so Rowey for Morgan Whitaker from a tight angle, it gets some help. From the inside of the post, but makes its way into the back of the net. His 10th goal of the season for our player of the season the past two at Plymouth Argyle. And he makes it 2-0. And hopefully this is a lead that we can hold on to. Make it three wins in a row in all competitions. But Morgan Whitaker off the back of Sarawi winning the ball back there off Slater. Who actually, if he kept going, would have been a chance to do something there potentially on the counter-attack. But for some reason, just took some time on the ball. We make the most of it and make it 2-0. And now coming up to the half hour mark, free kick here in the opposition half, the Italian centre back in Parola, one of the new signings as I said, plays that to Wilson Espre, nice ball out there for Sarawi, will try and take on a shot there, potentially could have tried to square that one for the Wayne train, but unfortunately goalkeeper parries that one away, still 2-0, but fair to say we are well and truly on top in this FA Cup fifth round clash, and hopefully that does continue, maybe can put this game to bed before half time and then give some real rotation players some game time 
in the second half. They try and play a ball over the top there, do Horsley, but thankfully we deal with that danger and now do look to build out from that. Cooper plays that one for Darius Williams. Now out to Mosquera. What can he do down that right-hand side? Takes his time, and that's actually not a good pass. Not linking up well there with Whitaker, but thankfully one of the Hall City players there with a loose touch, and we win that one back in our way. No slots through Morgan Whitaker looking for a double big chance too, but that one does go wide. Doesn't quite test Ingram, who to be fair, might have had that bottom left corner covered anyway, but still a big chance for us there to make it 3-0. Wayno, as I said, having a pretty good first half so far. That goal and also has been quite involved and our other attacks, and we go into the sheds here with a 2-0 lead, and to be fair, things are going pretty well. Hull City have only had the one shot on target in this game, and that was from the free kick, so I don't think we need to make any changes just yet. Hopefully, we can keep some of these rotation players out there for as long as possible, because then we should have a good fit team for that big Premier League clash at Old Trafford against Manchester United, which should also be the Wayne Train's 100th, so that might be something that we do late in this game, maybe the Wayne Train might need a rest to make sure he can bring up 100 games for us here at Plymouth Argo, because that would be a bit of a disaster if he got injured before then. But now at the hour mark, and we are going to make a change here. We're going to take off Nikola Ilyev, who's only going okay for Alan Abando, one of the youngsters that we did sign on deadline day. And off the back of that, Randall now, he's on a yellow card, albeit so, is Simon Somm. So we're not going to actually make that change, because we don't want both our ball wing midfielders to pick up extra yellow cards in this game, especially our first choice one, because then they might be missing for a big clash in the quarterfinals. But there is a highlight here, and we look to play out from the back. Mosquera has the ball down this right-hand side, plays that ball to the goal scorers, and Morgan Whitaker squares that for Obando. That would have been some first touch goal from him, but he'll score anyway, pretty much the first highlight he's been involved in. He puts that one away, albeit they are checking here for offside. We'll just wait and see here what the case is. But the goal has been awarded. And Alano Bando with a debut goal for the senior team. Tried to put that one away on the volley. And to be fair, not too sure there how Duffy hasn't gone down with concussion because Obando bumped that one. But fortunately, the ball goes out then to Sarawi. He squares it for our young Ecuadorian striker who puts that away to make it 3-0. And off the back of that, we will take off Wilson S. Brandon. Very good form and can handle more minutes at the moment than Miguel Gutierrez. So Jacob Graves can come on at left back for him and also Tony Springer at left wing for Sarawi. And also we will be on Pizarro for the Wayne train. And in fact, one more sub now as John Buckley makes his way down to a red heart. Tom Bischoff can come on for him. Off the back of that, we might be seeing here a corner to Hall City, but we don't because that gets cut out. Funny FM things. But Mosquera now picks up a yellow card. But we're making our way now into the last 10 minutes with a 3-0 lead and a pretty comfy spot here. Should be going through to the quarters of the FA Cup for the first time. And now a corner here in our favor gets cleared. But Reese Williams is on the ball. Goes back to Mosquera and all the way back to Mike Cooper. That means he should get a bit more football this season the way that we're going in this cup competition. We play a nice ball over the top there now. Bishop plays that one forward to spring it. From a tight angle, we'll beat Ingram in goal. He picks up only his second of the season. Of course, these days, has fallen down that picking order just a little bit more, especially off the back of the signing of Balumi in the January transfer window, but that will make it 4-0 completely all over this game. We've been far too classy for the outfit mid-table in the championship. As you would expect, Spring at there actually nearly runs right into Obando. That could have been a bit comical, but thankfully, we are now up by 4-0. And this is game over. Late highlight here for Hall City. And Manini is on the ball. Plays that for to Bowler, who starts to make his way forward down that left-hand side. Does our man there, I think, on Mosquera. And actually forces a pretty good save there out of Cooper. So maybe getting him to ease off tackles might have just impacted that highlight. Bowler might not have got that shot off if he was getting stuck in a bit more. But thankfully, we deal with the danger from that subsequent corner and are still up by four goals to nil as we make our way into five minutes of added time. There's one more highlight in this game as Hall City do win the ball from us down our right-hand side. Bowler starts to make his way forward, sizing up Mosquera on that yellow card. Now it's Butisic who plays that forward to Bowler. He does Mosquera there, and Cooper ends up in no man's land. That is a very good individual goal, albeit some interesting defending there from Mosquera as well as Williams, I believe that wasn't also the goalkeeping of Mike Cooper there. Interesting, but Mosquera gets absolutely skinned him from there. Our defense at sixes and sevens, to be fair, up until that point, Mosquera actually having 
a decent game because of that he now goes down to a 6.6 .6, but no harm done with that it actually probably makes things cheaper for us in this round because no clean sheet bonus but that is a very convincing win we are through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup off the back of a 4-1 victory over Hull City we'll come back shortly before the Manchester United game and reveal who we'll be taking on in tomorrow's episode in the quarterfinals so a good first up win for us there in today's episode, albeit as expected against the team mid-table. In the championship, there you can see the other teams who did make their way through to the next round. Arsenal, Middlesbrough, rather surprisingly West Ham, they knocked out Man City. Ipswich Town got past Lincoln. Chelsea beat Tottenham. Liverpool beat Bournemouth. And Man United, after extra time, they got past Everton. So those were the teams that we could have been drawn against. There were a couple of championship teams there that we could have got. That was not the case when we come back. For tomorrow's episode, we will be taking on West Ham in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Chelsea and Arsenal should probably be going through with home ties against teams from the Championship. And then a big clash down at the bottom, Manchester United. They take on Liverpool at Old Trafford. Hopefully, we can put them in a bit of a poor runner form prior to that game. Because we're about to take them on now in the Premier League. And this is a big fourth versus fifth clash. Chelsea have gone above us off the back of a win over Nottingham Forest since the start of today's episode. But if we can at least pick up a draw from this game, we will stay inside of that top four and hopefully can put a little bit of a gap here potentially on Man United if we do pick up a win. Also be nice to put a gap on teams like Aston Villa who aren't too much further behind them. And also Arsenal are worth keeping an eye on. They are drawing a lot of games, but they have only played 25 compared to us on 27. They could definitely jump above a team like West Ham once they do get through those games in hand that they do have. But hopefully we can pick up a decent result here against a Manchester United team who earlier in the season we lost to 1-0 at home off the back of a long-range goal from Diogo Dolo. And also we're quite a bit stronger for the second game in today's episode. Most players back from injury. The only injury that's still there is that one to Facundo Farias. And hopefully we can pick up, I believe this would be our first win at Old Trafford. I think we might have drawn there in the past, but not quite sure if we've won and you will see there. Most of our first team players are back in the lineup for this game. The only one who isn't is Wilson S. Brand Gutierrez. Still just can't quite handle the full game. So because of that, Wilson S. Brand in some pretty good form. He can start there at left back. And also Good Johnson still not on the bench coming back from injury in a similar situation to Gutierrez. And also Obando actually pretty good off the bench in that game albeit championship opposition in Hull City. So it does mean we're quite similar to that previous game. Just a few first teamers coming back in to the starting lineup, apart from Wilson S. Brand, as I said, in a pretty good picture form. And hopefully we can make it four straight wins and three straight wins in the Premier League, albeit Man United come to this one in a pretty good picture form. Hopefully we can get something out of this game, as I said, to make sure that we do stay above them. Otherwise, things get a bit more tricky for us, potentially, to try and make our way into Europe for next season, albeit if we can stay alive in the FA Cup, that's another avenue that we could get into Europe through if we do start to fall off in the Premier League, but fair to say off the back of that win over Hull City, things are about to get a lot tougher in that competition as we start to take on some good top half Premier League teams at early stages of this game, early on Balumi at right wing, he picks up a yellow card, we'll get him to ease off tackles, but hopefully that won't hurt us too much in terms of our defence in this game. First highlight, Marcus Rashford there was on the ball, but thankfully, Serginho just there with an interception, and we now look to build out from the back. Kaspar is on the ball, plays that one for two parole. A couple of our signings from yesterday's episode, they link up. Now, Ilyev starts to jink away down that left-hand side, back to parole, and now Bischoff, Man United, do have a pretty good press on us here, but thankfully, we're just being patient and making sure we make some smart decisions, which sometimes can be a bit rare from us on the super high tempo, but thankfully we do continue to keep the ball. We find Wilson S. Brand in some space down that left-hand side. Fizzes that one in nicely for Nikola Ilyev, but it does go wide and without a touch from Onana. So it is a goal kick, but good early chance for us there. But unfortunately, Nikola Ilyev can't quite find the back of net. I think so far this season, he's been our best scoring striker here at Plymouth Argo, especially with the Wayne train being quite injury prone this time around compared to last season also. That prolific one that he had first season of the save down in the championship. But highlight here to Man United and Hoyland. That ball gets flicked in behind. He tries there to chip Casper in goal. But thankfully it comes off the crossbar. And thankfully we just do enough there 
to clear that ball from inside our box because it did look like there briefly that we might put ourselves in a bit of trouble. But big chance there for Hoyland to grab a goal. Thankfully, both teams now have missed the chance. We do not go behind, but although we are picking up a few yellow cards in this first half now, both our wingers as well as Sergio Dest on the one. Hopefully, that doesn't prove a problem here for the remainder of this first half. Might be making a couple of subs because of that at half time, but Anthony is on the ball down that right hand side for United. They are taking their time here, but start to build forward. Somehow Rashford finds himself in a ton of space. Hopefully he was offside. I think I saw the other flag go up down that far side, and that is good because otherwise, pretty poor defense from us because he did find himself in a ton of space. And thankfully, the assistant referee, he was right. We'll also just get there, Sarawi this time to ease off tackles, but thankfully, it was only by a stride, thought he might be offside by a bit more than that, but thankfully that goal does get ruled out so far. This has been a pretty even first half. Man United have a pretty high XG compared to us, despite the fact we have got more shots off, but that's encouraging here at Old Trafford. But next highlight with five minutes ago in the first half, it is for United, but Balumi robs that one from Kieran Tenney. Big chance here for Nicola Iliev. He picks up his 15th of the season. Great work there from Balumi, who we have told to ease off tackles. Thankfully, we've also told our guys to press Kieran Tierney, and he just takes too long on the ball here. Balumi robs him a nice ball forward there for Iliev, just as he gets in behind Varane, I think that was. Beats Onana on that left-hand side, and that makes it 1-0 here at Old Trafford. And we can hold on to this. These would be three massive points to try and help us secure some Champions League football, potentially, for next season here at Plymouth Argo. Now a corner, which we do look for Parola from, but unfortunately, he just puts that one high and wide, so it does stay at 1-0 going into halftime, but that was a pretty good first half. That late goal to Iliev certainly helping us out because we were actually the team who were on the front foot in that game, which is quite nice off the back of a couple of defeats a few episodes ago in games. We were also on the front foot, and at halftime, going to take off a couple of players on those yellow cards, not Balumi, because he did quite well for that assist, but we're going to take off here Sarawi for Springer, and also Serginho Dest for Hausner, both those guys on those cards, and also not performing too well. So two changes at halftime. We now get stuck in to the second half, albeit highlight immediately from the restart, and it might be in favour of the home team. The ball finds its way up to Bruno Fernandes. Now Rashford to Dallo. Anthony does get in behind, but thankfully that's a big block there. Not too sure if it was actually. Sounds like it might have been a save there from Tobias and goal, but that was a big chance there for United to grab an equaliser early in the second half. And as we speak about it, it happens of all players. Lissandro Martinez does score from that corner. I have just realised too, did not get Tony Springett to ease off tackles before the start of that second half, which was a little bit dumb, but Lissandro Martinez, good hitter there somehow, that pegs a gap between our guy at the near post, and also Tobias, who did get a touch on it, but unfortunately can't keep that one out off the back of that prior good save off Anthony, and they make it one all here early in the second half. To be fair, this still wouldn't be too bad of a result. Bruno Fernandes there with a free kick, but thankfully that one just goes over the frame of goal, so it is still one all, but early stages of the second half, Man United and the team who are on the front foot, but Wayno in his 100th game for Plymouth Argyle will pick up an assist there. He squares that one for Balumi, who thankfully we did not take off at halftime on that yellow card. A goal now to go alongside his assist, but good routine from this front. Housing at a Wayno, a 1-2 there, including Simon Som as well. And nice square there. It finds Balumi, first time finish with that left foot, and it does beat Onana. And we pretty quickly... Off the back of this game, going back to one all, make it 2-1. And hopefully now we should be able to pick up at least something from this game to make sure we do stay inside of that top four. Now the Wayne train is playing well, but has picked up a yellow card. Interesting decisions here. Simon Som, though, is down to a red heart. So Adam Randall can come on for him. Also, just debating, we should bring on John Buckley here for Bischoff because, of course, Randall and Bischoff do not have the best combination. But I think we'll play things safe with the Wayne train. His 100th game, he's done a good job, but Damian Pizarro can come on for him, which will mean we still have one more sub left for the remainder of the second half. There you can see the table. We are in fourth. I don't think that's been quite updated as much as it should be. I think our gap above Man United now will be a little bit more, but now Aliyev, he goes down to a red heart. Our last sub, Alano Bando, the young Ecuadorian, he can come on yet again and hopefully create some chaos, kind of like he did in that game against Hall City. And there is a chance here for Man United 
to potentially pick a goal back. They play the ball inside the box. Anthony gets a shot off. It falls there to Abdallah off the back of a good block slash save, but thankfully this time he can't hit the target. So it does stay 2-1 and shortly off the back of that, it's a free kick to Bruno Fernandes. And that one comes off the post as well. The woodwork coming to our rescue there a couple of times in a row. That right post that Man United are peppering. And about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this game. And another highlight does start. And it is Man United who are on the ball. And now Ferran Torres plays that one back to Joe Willock. They've got numbers here. And Willock just jogs in behind our defence. A good strong run there. But thankfully Tobias comes up with a good save. And off the back of that, it is time for us to slow down the tempo. Be a bit short off our passing. And also start time wasting just a little bit. Hopefully that might mean that this corner does not take place. But unfortunately it still will. And Bruno Fernandes picks out Dallo there. Back to Fernandes. Makes his way inside the box. But thankfully... He was offside, but so does stay 2-1 in our favour going to the last couple of minutes of this game. Man United are now getting on the front foot. They have been a team in the second half who have actually had the ascendancy and they do have quite a higher XG than us, but thankfully we've scored those goals through Nikola Ilyev just before halftime and that quick reply through Balumi from an assist from the Wayne train and that is a big, big win for our hopes of Champions League football next season here at Plymouth Argyle. It does mean we'll grab a six-point gap on Manchester United and at Old Trafford, I think for the first time in the save as Plymouth Argyle, our first win at Old Trafford. That is a heck of a time to do it. We did pick up quite a few yellow cards. Wasn't an instruction, but it did seem to work. But there you can see we are now six points clear of Man United and also for now go above Chelsea back into third position on the Premier League table. But that is a big win with only 10 games left in the season. That 2-1 win over Man United firmly establishes ourselves as a European contender. So a huge win for us there, second up in today's episode. You saw what it did to the table before we did exit that game, but there it is again. We are now six points clear of Man United and up in third above Chelsea on goal differential, but also they do have two games in hand on us, but it does also give us a bit of breathing room on some other teams who could catch us up in the likes of Arsenal with a couple of games in hand as well but that is a very good win to end things in today's episode we pick up a 2-1 win at Old Trafford in Wayno's 100th game for the club if you enjoyed today's episode which also included that win over Hull City in the fifth round of the FA Cup then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. As I said tomorrow, we might play it by ear a little bit, but I think we'll come back first off and take on West Ham in the quarters of the FA Cup. Before then too, another quite big game in the Prem as we take on Tottenham at home. They've been a real four on our side so far in the save, especially since they've been managed by Roberto De Zerbi. But we'll take on West Ham, see if we can beat them in the FA Cup quarters. And if we do, we might actually go forward and play the semis of that competition. Not too sure who that will be against yet, but that would be at Wembley, and see if we can end the week with a double header where we might get the chance to lift our first trophy in the top tier here at Plymouth Argyle. And also, hopefully, if we can't do that, we can at least secure European football for next season when hopefully we should be back at home park. So until tomorrow for what might be an FA Cup-themed episode, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.